What is up gamers? I'm Rick Kakis and today we are going to be taking a look at a bunch of really powerful builds that myself and my team are looking to run in day one Vault of Glass. So feel free to copy or use the concepts of any of these builds to help improve your own team's success in this brand new raid and keep in mind it's not all about Vault of Glass. These are just really powerful PvE builds in general that you can carry over to a bunch of different activities. And so, let's get started. But first, if you're planning on doing that day one raid grind, you need that energy and that focus. And to get it, you better be drinking Advanced GG Focus, baby. The best and only clinically proven gaming supplement out there. And to celebrate the launch of Travel Danielle's brand new strawberry banana flavor, use code KHD to get 15% off instead of 10 for the next 24 hours. And this applies to any flavor, including my own Cactus Kiwi Lime. So definitely make advantage of that. It's linked in the description down below. All right, now let's talk about these builds. And let's begin here with the Warlock. And I would say that Warlock, honestly, as a class, has some of the best utility within a day one raid scenario. It's got great healing capabilities, it's got great team focus capabilities, and it's got some good damage output focus capabilities. So let's start here with some Well of Radiance builds. And first off, taking a look at the weapons, and remember, weaponry can apply to a bunch of different builds. Firstly, I've got an ignition code with slide shot. I've done a video on this, absolutely fantastic. And slide shot with a grenade launcher lets you put out a massive volume of fire without having to worry about stacking a million reload perks. And I'm combining that with the Anarchy. The Anarchy, arguably the best PVE exotic in the entire game. And running double grenade launchers is extremely powerful. It lets you use grenade launcher finder and grenade launcher scavenger, and it has those double up. So. A grenade launcher finder is going to make you finder bricks not only for your special but for your heavy too and having just constant ammo for those two things is what you want. And it also lets me use the breach and clear seasonal mod. Absolutely two, maybe three of us are going to be running this mod. It inflicts weakness, a debuff on bosses champions and enemies that you uh, break their shield when you hit them with grenade launcher damage so hey there's a boss double tick him with anarchy now he's taking 30 percent more damage the equivalent of shooting a tether at that boss from all your teammates so that is absolutely going to be involved in raid dps strategies and that's why we're running this but another important and I think kind of big brain weapon choice here is the gnawing hunger. I have the curated role from back in the day with overflow and rampage. You can't get that these days, but subsistence rampage is going to be pretty darn good as well. And importantly, this is a void auto rifle. So voids important because we know there's going to be minotaurs within the vault of glass and they have void shields and an auto rifle means that you can run an anti-barrier auto rifle mod, not for the champions, but because that means you can kill hobgoblins when they go into their protective state. That's right, you can just mow them down when they're supposed to be immune because of this mod. And again, we know there's going to be quite a few hobgoblins in this upcoming raid, so being able to kill them when they're supposed to be in their, you know, most powerful immune phase is a really big advantage. All right, now let's continue looking at some more armor and mod choices. Obviously, I'm running Protective Light. This is one of the best PvE mods in the game. It's going to give you a huge degree of survivability. Now, again, I'm running those double grenade launchers, so that means I also get to take advantage of the extremely cheap, because it's in the seasonal artifact, Blast Radius. So I just get like a double kill with my special grenade or with my anarchy and boom, I'm charged with light, which of course can trigger protective light. And then for my exotic, I'm actually using the brand new Boots of the Assembler. So these are incredibly good in PvE. It lets you put down a healing rift or an empowered rift, and then noble seekers will go out and hit nearby allies and give them either healing, if you're in a healing rift, or an empowering weapon damage boost if you're in an empowering rift. So I'm going to be using healing rifts because every time you do that action of hitting your allies with those seekers, you extend the duration 
duration of your healing rift. And that means as long as there is allies nearby to hit, basically, your healing rift will last almost indefinitely. So the very first part of Vault of Glass is defending the Confluxes and being able to put down an infinitely lasting healing rift and also heal nearby teammates that aren't maybe in the healing rift at the time is just incredibly good for, again, your survivability. However, this is not the only good exotic you can run. Moving on to my teammates Well of Radiance build, they are also going to be using an auto rifle, this time the Chroma Rush for the same reasons you can put on those auto rifle anti-barrier rounds, double grenade launchers again for the same reason, blast radius, etc. This time, however, we're actually using a really good choice for a grenade launcher, the Deafening Whisper, just because, hey, like I said, that's void damage. Really easy to get double kills with this thing because it's a wave frame and the void damage deals with the Minotaurs. Then, for our exotic, we're using the Phoenix Protocol. This is a classic one, but it's, as always, fantastic. So it's going to let you recharge your super significantly as long as you're getting kills in your Well of Radiance, which, how are you not getting kills in your Well of Radiance? So this means that your well is going to be up almost constantly because you can recharge it basically fully when you're in the initial one. But another key aspect of this build I want to mention before moving on is because we're using that void wave frame grenade launcher, we get to use Warmind's Decree from the Seasonal Artifact, where void splash damage final blows have a chance to create Warmind cells. So you can spawn Warmind cells with the Deafening Whisper. That is really powerful. All right, now let's move on to another Warlock build. This one is much more offensive. So we're using Chaos Reach and we're combining that with the Geomags. So this is going to let you not only get your Chaos Reach a lot more because of close enough, but your Chaos Reach is gonna last longer, deal more damage. This is fantastic for ad clearing. Uh, Chaos Reach with Geomags is something that I've been running in Grandmasters a lot more often. Well, not anymore, but last season, simply because you know they can take out an entire cabal tank right they can take out a ton of ads it's a very good super but moving on to the weapons this is a much more war mind self focused build so firstly we do have the heritage just because it's a phenomenal weapon huge dps dealer also great at clearing out majors and the likes then we've got of course the aikilos smg you know arc is not necessarily preferable but this is one of the best war mind producing weapons in the game and then we've got the xenophage so i was reminded that xenophage is probably going to be pretty darn good against the oracles in vault of glass that you can't get crit on them anyways so might as well snipe them from across the map with the xenophage and because we're using xenophage here we actually get to put the wrath of rasputin mod on and that makes it so that solar splash damage can spawn war mine cells so the xenophage by getting kills can spawn war mine cells and then if you put on the rage of the war mind mod which adds solar damage to war mine cell explosions that's a wombo combo there because you blow up a warmind cell that deals solar splash damage which spawns more warmind cells and you can just chain off that way. But the next and the last warlock build we're looking at is a really unique one that my teammate is planning on running for the first ad clearing part of this raid. So he's actually a shadebinder warlock interestingly and he's using bleak watcher. This means that your grenades can turn into those uh, stasis turrets. Now, we're actually combining that with the Verity's Brow. So, energy weapon kills give you death throws as a perk, and that importantly provides you with grenade energy. So, that means he can basically constantly have those stasis turrets up. And those stasis turrets, even in Grandmasters, are really powerful because freezing enemies solid like it works on even majors it will just constantly freeze them or slow them and that lets you just kill them extremely easily so constantly having like all the enemies spawning out of an area for example be frozen solid so we can just easily pick them off with our grenade launchers man that's actually really good and that's something i didn't think of and in terms of weaponry, you guessed it, we're running double grenade launcher. That's, again, a common theme just because it's so dang powerful. This time, the Salvager's Salvo, which is fantastic, and the Anarchy. And then the primary weapon is the 7th Seraph Carbine to spawn Warmind Cells. 
And again, auto rifle with the anti-barrier is anti-hobgoblin. But moving on from there, we have the Titan builds. And the first one is actually a Thundercrash build. And we're using Thundercrash basically so we get to use the Cuirass of the Falling Star. This is a fantastic exotic and it lets you one shot a lot of enemies. And this is something that we're not planning on running initially, but we're going to have the option to switch to simply because there are some powerful enemies that you need to kill right away, such as gatekeepers in Vault of Glass. So one guy with the Cuirass can just go absolutely yeet them instantly, kill them, and then we can just go uh, forward with the objective. And because of that, our weaponry kind of reflects that a bit. We're using a heritage because you're probably going to be close range, and sometimes if you uh, use your Thunder Crash and it almost kills a, like a boss or a mini boss and doesn't quite, you can finish them off with the heritage. Also, this one has Thresh, so you get Thunder Crash more often, and then an Auto Rifle and a Xenophage, nothing we haven't seen before. Moving on from there, however, we have kind of a more interesting uh, Titan build. This one is going to be a Bubble. Bubble Titans are going to be extremely good in any day one scenario, providing that survivability, also providing a huge uh, damage boost. In fact, the buff you get from Bubble is higher than the damage boost you get from Well. So if you're DPSing a raid boss, you actually want at least one bubble present all the time and our weaponry this time is going to be the ignition code and we're using that for blinding grenades right this is going to be used to just disorient minotaurs to disorient those bigger more powerful enemies it makes them not attack you it makes them very vulnerable uh, for you to damage them finish them off so that could definitely be something uh, you should consider running and in that same vein we're using the Aikilos SMG here for war mine cell production but then we're using the cellular suppression mod which means that when you shoot war mine cells they're going to emit a blast that blinds and disorients nearby enemies so it's just meant for constantly disorienting all enemies around you so that your teammates can really easily pick them off if you can set this up in an area where enemies are spawning from you just completely negate the danger and the offense of all of those enemies and then this time for our exotic we're using the helm of saint 14 this is an exotic that you should always consider if you're running a bubble just because it makes your bubble 10 times better for survivability it means that now uh, enemies that enter are going to be blinded and especially when we're dealing with the vex we have minotaurs and we also have the new wyverns that are going to charge you and they're going to come into your bubble so blinding them immediately is very valuable and the fact that you get an overshield when you come out of the bubble is extremely good like if you have a normal bubble you die so much because you are in the bubble you get that survivability then you leave and you go back to no health and you just get one shot and helm of saint 14 is going to solve that problem now moving on from there the next titan build we have is actually the one i plan on running and that's going to be middle tree sentinel so you get banner shield and we're combining that with the ursa furiosa this is one of the best titan exotics for pve in the game and what it does is that when you're using the banner shield when you're guarding the damage you receive that's converted to super energy so it's really not uncommon especially when you're doing an under level activity so if you're doing a grandmaster if you're doing you know a day one raid with contest mode active and you're taking a ton of damage from powerful enemies and you're guarding it's not uncommon for your super to end and then you get 100 percent of your super back you can just cast it again immediately or if not 100 percent 80 percent 75 percent a significant amount of your super back so that's going to firstly produce a ton of orbs of power for your teammates so they can get their supers way more often and just having almost a constantly and infinitely charging super is really 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 powerful and it adds a great degree of survivability for your team as well but remember it's not all about the banner shield because we're middle tree we get access to controlled demolition which makes your grenades way more powerful way more lethal and if that's the case why not use the elemental ordinance mod so you can produce elemental wells that are going to be based on your subclass for getting grenade kills so void elemental wells and because we're producing void elemental wells all the time for using our extremely lethal grenades 
why not use the brand new Elemental Well mod, Well of Tenacity? So every time we pick up one of those Void Elemental Wells, we get 10 seconds of damage resistance. Now it's only going to be about, you know, a 10 to 15% damage resistance, but that's going to matter. That's going to save your life quite a bit. Now, of course, we're using Protective Light plus Blast Radius again, but this time the weapons are a little bit different. Of course, we're running Double Grenade Launcher, but we've got the Wither Horde as an absolutely unbelievable ad clearing weapon. Like, shoot this where enemies are spawning and you just destroy them. It's great against more powerful enemies too that tick damage combined with the debuff from Breach and Clear is going to make short work of them. And then we're just using a powerful heavy legendary grenade launcher the behringer's memory to hey wither horde a boss combine it with behringer's memory shots and you're going to do a ton of damage however i would mention that if we're in a boss fight i would simply switch on to anarchy and then combine it with any number of powerful pve snipe rifles secession frozen orbit you know etc but speaking of boss DPS, one more weapon combo that's really saucy I just want to mention is that you can potentially use the Arbalist because it's going to pierce through enemy shields, so it's going to be good even if a Minotaur is charging you, right? You use that as your special weapon. It's kind of like a mini sniper. It's going to be fantastic at taking down uh, those hobgoblins that are on, on platforms overlooking you and shooting you. And then that means you can also use something like the Threaded Needle. Both of these weapons just got a 15% precision damage buff and a 20% reserve ammo buff. And then you get to use double linear fusion rifle finders and scavengers to have a ton of ammo for this stuff. Like your damage output with the threaded needle with a good roll like this one here with rapid hit and vorpal weapon is actually pretty substantial. But if you really want to go hard for DPS, you could also use the combo of the Izanagi's Burden Sniper Rifle. Like that outputs a ton of damage. And what you do is you combine that with an auto loading rocket launcher. So like this auto loading sleepless here, this is a phenomenal roll. Vorpal weapon is fantastic. Now, technically lasting impression does a tiny bit more damage, but it's trash against the ads, whereas Vorpal is not. But either way, that's gonna let you shoot off an auto loading rocket, do the Izanagi's max reload shot, switch back to a rocket, shoot another rocket, go back to Izanagi's and just hot swapping between those two things does one of the best damage outputs you can do in the entire game. I think arguably might be the best with weapons. So if you wanna go pure damage, in a raid boss damage scenario, that's something to consider as well. But continuing on from there, last and kind of least in my opinion, is our hunter build. Now I was excited to bring you guys some awesome hunter builds for PvE involving the Star Eater Scales, the brand new hunter exotics, which made hunters extremely powerful in PvE. But apparently Bungie thought it was too powerful. So remember those are actually disabled for day one Vault of Glass. You cannot run them. But if you still want to run Hunter, something that is going to be quite powerful is simply running uh, either top tree or bottom tree tether. And what we're doing here is we're combining bottom tree tether, in this case, with the Omnioculus. This is a really, really powerful PvE exotic, being able to throw down a smoke and not only make yourself, but nearby teammates or throw it at a group of teammates, make all of them invisible and give them some damage resistance, like that can save their lives. That is really, really good. And that is something you should absolutely consider running. The reason I'm not too high on this is because normally having one of these would be great because they get to also use their tether to debuff a boss, but because of breach and clear, that just isn't necessary. So that's why we're actually bottom tree with Omnioculus, because you can use that just as an ad clearing super instead of having to worry about debuffing anything. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.